Hello, it is Tuesday, May 9th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Tuesday puzzle today, so it should be a relatively approachable themed crossword. And this hopefully approachable edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Victoria Rojishka, Kathleen Quinn, Quotidia File, and, as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Self Patreon campaign, for their generous support. They're sustaining this channel, keeping the series going, and for that, I'm incredibly appreciative. So thank you to them. Thank you to everybody who's a patron of the channel. And if you'd like to become a patron of the channel, channel yourself and directly support this series, you can head over to patreon.com slash dailysolve, Click the link in the description field underneath the video, and there you can find all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. And of course, as a benefactor, you can also get the Daily Self Let's Check the Crosses mug. Thank you if you are among any of those groups, and um, I appreciate it. So also, you can join the Daily Self Discord chat server. That's free for anybody to join. There's a link in the description field to that. And um, don't forget to... Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you've not, not yet done that. Not yet, I say optimistically. Um, but thank you if you have. Thank you to everybody who has subscribed. All right, let's get on to today's crossword, our Tuesday crossword by Margaret, uh, Margaret Cycle. Um, that's hopefully pronounced. And she has constructed um, seven or eight crosswords for the New York Times. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving. Let's see what's going on. Oh, right. We have what looks like a sort of smiley face in a vertically symmetrical grid. So unlike most New York Times crossword grids, which are radially symmetrical, in other words, they're, if you rotated the grid 180 degrees, the black cells would be disposed identically. In this case, it is symmetrical about a vertical axis. So if we, if we um, folded the puzzle vertically, that, that same property would would uh, be evinced. We'd see the, the same pattern of black cells. Anyway, uh, that often happens with themed puzzles in order to allow for important, specific important answers to fit in the grid. But let's see. Control V command, that would be paste on a Windows computer. And a tennis shot that might be smashed back. A lob, which is a, a big overhead, should, long, slow overhead shot could be smashed back. Yes, we can. Sloganeer of 2008 is Obama. Uh, that was Barack Obama's presidential slogan. And what, what does this say? Frequent descriptor for n for nine across. I remember Obama being called no drama Obama sometimes, and that fits in here. I don't know if that's the answer. Um, Hawaiian greeting, aloha. Maybe it is. Blank city, Detroit. Motor city is a, is a name for Detroit, uh, owing to its status as the um, sort of automotive capital of the U.S. Uh, and Captain's Stop is a vast? Is that? I don't know if that's correct. 1904 Nobelist who wrote Conditioned Reflexes. That would be Pavlov, right? Famous for, uh, we sort of part of the part of language through the phrase Pavlov's dog um, regarding kind of conditioned reflexes, I guess. And Ballpark snack topped with cheese sauce, nachos looks correct. This does look like no drama, doesn't it? Let's put it in. I guess we're solving the bottom of the grid now. Person on a beat could be you could have a beat cop with a particular street patrol, and then a nor'easter is a um, it's a wind. It's a sort of it's a nautical term, I think. Uh, although I, I now it's probably used. In, more than just a nautical context, but I think it derives from nautical language for a wind from the Northeast. Strong wind. A toaster treat could be a Pop-Tart. Um, sort of what little kind of pockets of pastry or, or, or pockets of filling surrounded by pastry. Bunches of flowers are, are what? Hmm. I don't know. Posies? It doesn't really make sense. Trunk is your torso, maybe? Uh, the trunk of your body. And cathedral recess would be an apse. 404 not found, e.g. in computing. That's an error when you when you try to visit a website and the, I don't know, server doesn't respond, I guess. Uh, here we have the uh, two fingers from Winston Churchill. That is uh, v for victory, Churchill famously um, pictured 
doing that. And quiet fitness discipline is yoga. That makes sense. I am woman, hear me roar, goes the, the phrase. Um, I don't remember the actual provenance of that phrase. Maybe someone can remind me in the comments. And pitching ability colloquially, um, add pitching ability. I don't know if it means add, oh, an arm. No, it means in baseball, pitching the ball. So you have a good arm. And then, because colloquially you'd say, oh, great arm, kid. That's a good pitch. Uh, Shrek or Fiona, those are ogre characters in the Shrek films and um, the book as well, I suppose. To be an agent for somebody is to rep them, to represent them. And an incline that affords access would be a ramp. So an incline that affords access to um, those in wheelchairs, for instance. What is this V doing? Election day exhortation. Vote. You might, you might be exhorted to vote on election day. Label for a post makeover photo could be after, as in before and after photos. I still don't think I know what the theme is. I don't think I've seen. Yeah, I don't know. Musical set in ancient Egypt is Aida. That's a famous uh, Egypt set opera. A printmaker, a foot, I suppose, makes a footprint. And the question mark there is a bit of a, uh, indicates a bit of a pun. And as I sort of mentioned the other day, that's because printmaker is, that's sort of a phrase in its own right, someone who makes printed materials. And also it's early in the week, so we're more likely to get the the help of the indicator of a pun or a bit of wordplay. Okay. The Blank Five, nickname for the Queer Eye cast. I've actually never seen Queer Eye, but I assume it's the Fab Five um, sort of derived from the Fab Four of the Beatles. Buy in, say, could be ante to a, a gambling game. And soulmate with the could be the one. And a boilermaker component is beer. Um, there we go. All right, so the, the sort of... Um, I don't know, you wouldn't really call it a cocktail, but the, I don't know, <laughs> alcoholic beverage the mix, I suppose. Okay, uh, let's see, let's let's do this thing. We're on, or it's on, or we're, aren't we on? Prefix with political, that could be sociopolitical. Okay, that's plausible. Bottomless well could be an abyss, maybe, oops. And full speed ahead, full speed ahead. Um, hmm, not really sure. That's a shame. And I approve. I approve. Hmm, maybe this is wrong. Oh, right, we have another. Oh, is it? Is this the, oh, I see. This is the theme, I suppose. We have, uh, right, okay, I didn't, I didn't notice this. We have different uh, sort of two-fingered emojis. Right, okay. So blank when ordering means, oh, this is clever. This is very clever. It means to please. I'm going to do all these. Um, what's the first one? Here we go. This emoji at an anti-war protest is the peace sign. Um, two in a silly group photo. Bunny ears, I guess, if you do it behind... If you, if you put those up behind someone's head, these sort of indicating bunny ears. And then I guess that's it. Oh, there we go. That's funny. Okay. So <laughs> didn't pick up on that at all until I guess it makes sense until I saw two of them. So how many were there? One, two, were there four, three, four. Yes, there are four of those. Oh, and that's the, and there's the, there's also, I don't know, is the sort of smiley face in the middle? Is that a nod to obviously a kind of smiling face being an incredibly common emoji or as well? I'm not sure. It might be. Uh, you can imagine a smiling person doing doing any of these. All right. Anyway, this old house network, is it PBS? I'm guessing because of the P? I think that sounds right, actually, because I think it's been on for quite a while. One of the Ivies, this is, with because Ivies is capitalized, I assume it's referring to the Ivy League universities in the United States, one of which is Brown University. An apt name for a curator, so you could have a museum cura curator who's appropriately named Art. And Philippa of Hamilton, Philippa Sue, is one of the Schuyler sisters. I don't, I don't remember which, unfortunately. Wasn't overturned as a ruling. Yes, it is Philippa Sue, because this could be, wasn't overturned. The ruling stood. It was maintained by a higher court, I suppose. 
And if something ceased, it ended. Shoulda listened to me. I told ya. And the shoulda gives us a clue as to that ya rather than I told you because of the informality and contracted language. All those in favor in the Senate could be eyes, as in I or nay, and early home for Abraham Lincoln famously was a log cabin that, um, yes, Abraham Lincoln was famously raised in a log cabin. Is that is that one of those things that's true? I think that's actually true and not just apocrypha. Uh, Japanese sash is an obi. This is a relatively commonly clued um, article of clothing in the New York Times crossword, so it's one that's worth remembering, an obi. Oh, and that's it's very good. We have a theater award that sounds like 15 across. So theater award that sounds like an OB is the OB, the Off-Broadway Award, OB. And um, sort of fitting in this grid because we have uh, sort of different, in this case, different sounds that can produce, you know, the, the same sound, sorry, that can produce different words. And here we had different images that can produce different phrases. Uh, the same image that can produce different phrases. All right. Driving for Uber EG is a gig, it's sort of the gig economy people call a kind of zero hour contract work. Uh, implement for eating soup, but probably not for stirring coffee. <laughs> a big spoon, I suppose. You probably wouldn't use a big spoon to stir coffee, but a soup spoon tends to be on the large side. And to make believe is to pretend, to play, oh, to play something, to make believe, to play I don't know. Alpha's off opposite could be omega due to the them being on opposite sides of the Greek alphabet and then often used to refer to beginning and end. Uh, Disney films set in Imperial China would be Mulan. I suppose there are two films with that name now. And blank pop, elect, elect, eclect, oh, I see, eclectic genre. Alt pop, I guess, alternative pop. Sure, I guess that's eclectic. I don't really know. Uh, I don't really know what's implied by alt pop, I suppose, but it sounds right. Spoil to spoil something is to mar it, and raffle ticket, e.g., could be an entry into a raffle, and at any rate, you might say, anyway, at any rate. Okay, sorts could be ilks, so uh, the same ilk of something is the same kind, the same sort of it. And a reader's download could be an ebook. Here's an e. Where we, you know, I really do think we've decreased. The, the frequency of E words since I started doing this series. I used to complain about them all the time early in this, but yeah, it was, I don't know, probably almost two years ago now, yikes. But um, I used to complain about them all the time because there were so many that I felt were just not, not really legitimate parts of language. No one actually uses them. And we just, we almost never get them anymore, which is fine with me. But ebook is one of the few that people do actually say because there is a meaningful distinction between a book and an ebook. Whereas nobody says e-tailer online because you don't really, you just don't really need to. You just say, I bought it online. There's nothing that word is doing for you that uh, is necessary. Whereas ebook is useful. Suffix with schnoz, schnozola is kind of exaggerated way to refer to somebody's nose. Um, I think that's probably the answer. Independent divisions in corporate jargon. Yes, you could have different si different business units siloed off, that kind of thing. And a grandma to Brits is uh, one's nan. So yes, here in the UK, that is a um, common word for grandma's nan. All right. Treasure stash is a trove. Fission focus is the atom, I suppose, nuclear fission. I assume that's what we're referring to here. Breath mint from a tin could be an altoid. So an altoid is a, um, I think this came up once in the crossword and someone in the comments said they'd never heard of, of these. So they're little, they're tiny little mints. And I think they say, I think they were described as being curiously strong on the tin. And um, anyway, that's what they are. Blank, my singer with the 2018 hit booed up. Oh, I don't think I've heard of that. L Ellie, I don't know. Uh, oh, to play act is to make believe. And garlic segments are cloves. You could have several cloves and a head of garlic. Mo the most docile is the tamest. So this was Ella, Ella May, singer with the 2018 hit boot up. Okay. Oh, this was Posies. Why did I not think that was correct? I don't know. Strange. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that was the answer. And here we have spring forward hours, daylight savings time. It's when you, when you spring forward. Uh, so there we go. Blank to autocorrect. Martha Solano poem. 
Ode to Autocorrect. I don't know if I've read this, but I think I might have, and it's full of of sort of ostensibly autocorrected words. So words that are similar to the word that the, you know the putative author intended to type. And you can sort of infer, and it's funny as a result of that, and you can infer what the original intention would have been from context. Okay, full speed ahead. It's a go, maybe? Maybe in your in your siloed business unit, you're launching an initiative and you're all circling back around a, or an actioning some, some points. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it's a go, you might say. Let's do this thing. Uh, what? Get, I don't know. Maybe this is, is this not correct? That's a shame. No, this looks right. Too bad. Game on. Let's do this thing. Game on. Okay, I see. There we go. I approve. I approve. Okay. Okay by me. Oh, I see. It's okay not spelled out. Right. Okay. My, my instinct is always to spell okay a y, but that's not what's going on here. But we'll we'll um, check the crosses before we fill it in. It's a drag. Could be a toke. You could take a drag on a cigarette or with a toke. Most more often used with a, a joint, a marijuana cigarette. And then buckwheat noodles in Tokyo are soba, and that is that is um, buckwheat noodles um, in Japanese cuisine. And then I approve. It's okay by me. So is that the answer? Yes. That was the Tuesday crossword. There we have it. So a nice, a fairly subtle theme in the sense that there was no revealer. There wasn't any, um, there weren't any sort of symbols in the grid. There was no, there was no shading, um, but we did have this conspicuously uh, vertically symmetrical grid. And I don't know if that's directly related, but it sort of seems like it probably is. Uh, it generally speaking, being sort of a smiley face, feels it feels thematically um, resonant, I suppose, with the theme. Anyway, so we had our four different uh, sort of front-facing two-finger uh, emoji deployments, one of which was the peace sign, one of which served as V for victory, one of which serves to indicate two please to a server, and one of which is bunny ears behind your friend in a group photo. Uh, a very nice, subtle and approachable Tuesday theme from Margaret Cycle. And uh, there we have it. That was a good one. And I think a, a nice a nice approachable puzzle surrounding the theme. Um, nothing too, too disastrous in there. Uh, so there we have it. That was the puzzle for Tuesday, May 9th. And I think there was just one single uh, comment on yesterday's puzzle. Well, there were several comments, but one sort of bit of additional context for a for a clue. And it wasn't a correction per se. It was an interesting explanation about um, regarding 24 Down's Fen answer. This is from Altwar, who reminds us that the de definition there was marshy area. The answer was Fen. And I think I listed out a few additional wetland types. I think I said marsh, Fen, bog, that kind of thing. And Altwar says... The four main types of wetlands can be differentiated like so. Fens have alkaline, higher pH water. Bogs have acidic, lower pH water. Swamps typically have acidic water with trees and shrubs. And marshes have a typically neutral pH with only grasses and the occasional thrub, shrub. That's really interesting. I probably won't remember those pro properly, but I'm very glad to have learned it. And I will remember that there is a distinction <laughs> between the acidity of the different types of wetlands and their sort of flora. So I find that fascinating. Thank you for for um, for dropping the comment. And I apologize in advance next time I encounter this topic in a crossword and don't properly remember the distinction. Um, but I'll remember that there is one and that's something. Anyway, that's that for today's puzzle, for today's um, video. And I'll see you tomorrow for the Wednesday crossword, the midweek mid-difficulty grid. So do join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care.